everyone. Welcome to another episode of Film House. This week I'm joined by James and Elise Wilms. How y'all doing? Hey, hey how are you? here we are. Hey. We're the movie te- movie team, <laughs> movie squad. If you guys need to talk about movies, you call the two of us. Well, call, him, movie squad. call him. I might be doing something, but you call him. She won't be maybe. busy. She <laughs> won't be busy. We will be changing the name of this podcast to The Movie Squad. Movie Squad. Right. Movie Squad. Adam Cool Jacket. Thank you very much. It's a new, new piece of merch coming out in the store for your audio listeners. This is what it sounds like. Oh, actually, here, it sounds fast. pretty good. Uh, this week, we're talking about something near and dear to my heart, which is basically every week. But we're talking about leeks because, man. The vegetable? No, Elise. E A K S. Okay. Uh. Audio listeners. <laughs> I will be getting to that in a second. But I want to just let you know that this podcast is sponsored by two sponsors Hymns. You can get started with your first free month by going to fourhymns.com slash filmhouse and extraordinary the film. Check it out by going to crankedupfilms.com slash extraordinary for more information. So, uh, the big buzz happening right now. Aha, uh-huh. that's where internet, it all started. Uh, Papa Warner Brothers, uh, one of our uh, part Ma- of numerous numerous conglomerate. That, it's not a tentacle. We're, it's one of the multi brains inside inside of the the octopus. We are within. Just just full disclaimer. Yes, we are. We do work for a company that's owned by the same company that owns Warner Brothers, who's making the upcoming the Batman film. But they are not paying us or telling us to talk or not talk about this. I mean, but if they in want way, to, shape or form. <laughs> you know, give uh, us a call. Warner Brothers actually is going to be a topic of discussion in this. Uh, podcast because they seem to be at the center of a lot of leaks. Uh, and I am sort of relating it a lot to the Batman films, which have sort of been at the center of a lot of this stuff. So here it is. This is Robert Pattinson's stunt man uh, in the full cow. <laughs> How looks, can we be certain? Uh, because Honestly, he has black dots on his face, which they will then CGI replace his mouth looks with. looks like Ben Affleck. Is Ben Affleck just Robert Pattinson's stunt, uh, stunt double? Could be. Can I, you imagine? So, so the stunt men now we have to CG their face? I mean, we can. If uh, someone just said that's Robert Pattinson, I guess Robert yeah, Pattinson. I don't know. It now is. we have to CG. We have to spend the extra time CGing their and face on there. That's the leak. It's not even leaking the actor. It's leaking the stunt double. Well, yeah, I guess. I mean, they're not going to put Robert Pattinson on a motorcycle. He's too pretty and dainty. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd be pissed if I was yeah. an actor, and uh, and then I was like, "You're going to be Batman, except you're never going to get to wear the suit, and you're not going to get to ride the motorcycle." And I go, "You keep your millions of dollars." No, thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. And then I Tom plant Cruise. a tree. <laughs> anyway. uh, but instead of just going, in, obviously, it's like, oh, here it is. It's a suit. Uh, you can judge it for what it is. Well, but can we judge it? I don't. Do you want that to be part of the discussion? Uh, you you can. I personally don't like to judge pre-release photos because you're, you're not seeing the final product. Mm-hmm. You're getting an early look. And we've seen this throughout time. Uh, which I would like to discuss, and okay. the history of leaks. This is from a website, the RF, or sorry, the RPF.com. This is a story about one of the first earliest leaks. Let me just set these up for you guys. Eh, and then eh. Yeah, I'll just read off screen, and I'll play some images for you guys here. Mm. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, a story about a leak from the film episode. Was it six? Yeah, um, Star Wars: Return of the Jedi, episode six. Uh, was probably, I think, in the history of movie leaks, one of the first big movie leaks, but the information actually didn't come out for years. It could have. But uh, here's a little story. Uh, So it was in the spring of 1982 in the Southern California desert region known as the Buttercup Valley. Cameras were rolling on a film called Blue Harvest, colon, Horror Beyond Imagination. That was the name of the, you know, they Mm -hmm. put up the fake signs, yeah. yeah. Uh, And when, in fact, it was, I think at the time, Revenge of the Sith, and then later changed to Return of the Jedi. Um, a SoCal science fiction nut named Mike Davis had heard rumors about the production just having gone underway. He and his pals decided to pack up some camping supplies and go check it out. Uh, this was the 1980s, a time when film productions were able to remain much more secretive than they are today, due to in large part that the producers were able to stem the flow of information much more effectively in the absence of the internet. So as you can see, there's some early so pictures these here. guys went out into the desert. Oh, there's Harrison Ford. They got pretty close. I mean, it right looks like there. they got pretty. They <laughs> wandered one? up to yes. that place. Yeah. So um, this the once again the photos were not published until years later. These are this is the sort of thing that could have come out early on, but uh, this sort of came up around the same time as movies were starting to get fandom behind them. Mm-hmm. This was, uh, I would say, possibly the first big epic blockbuster trilogy movie where the story, instead of being told in just a single film, was told over many films. Uh, much more like an epic. Filmic anticipation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this was a time when 
yeah, there are guys who are like, yeah, I'm a big Star Wars nerd. I mean, maybe there wasn't the obviously it wasn't the fandom there is today. Um, so yeah, the story continues. Uh, still compared to today's environment, security was relatively lax. It consisted of a chain link perimeter <laughs> fence and scattered security grounds. Mike and his cohorts were able to walk right up to the fence where they were told that as long as they behaved, they could hang out and watch movie magic in the making. They were even allowed to openly take photos. Wow. So yeah, a, a lot different than it is today. <laughs> <laughs> Audio listeners, we're looking at a photo of uh Oh, oh my god, Boba Fett, mm-hmm. and he's got <laughs> he's on strings like a puppet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is uh, right before Harrison Ford uh, or Han Solo blindly hits his jetpack, and then he flies and hits the side of uh, the barge and falls into the Sarlacc. Hero. My brain Han- wanted to call him Jehovah Fett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Jehovah Fett. So the uh, the story ends here as the filming rolled for days. Mike and his embedded amateur snoops. Uh, would write down snippets of dialogue they could overhear and try to piece together the story based on what they were seeing. Wow. Which is, I, I guess, sounds relatively tame by today's standards, mm-hmm. but it's just so much I feel like has changed. Well, it's funny It's funny the idea of doing this with Star Wars, just given the legacy that Star Wars has, a movie that only became the movie that we know what it is in the edit, right? Mm-hmm. Like, first so one, if, yes. you, if you were on set for the first Star Wars movie and you oh, were, like, yeah. trying to piece it together... You would, and then you finally saw it. You'd be like, "Oh, this is." I have no idea. Yeah, you look at the script and go, "That is this." Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, once again, this movie was made uh, early '80s. By the you know by the time production was rolling around, I believe it was '81, '82, or was it around that time? Either way. So this is way before internet, mm-hmm. before this sort of thing happened. But you know, things sort of uh, were quiet. So during the '90s, they just sort of trudged along. Um, movie sets did start to tighten security a bit more, and Leaks were becoming kind of more of a concern around the time of a little film called Jurassic Park. Mm. It was it was a movie with a lot of hype behind it because it was based on a very popular book. And now that Steven Spielberg was involved in Amblem and Universal and everything, there were a lot of people trying to get in and be like, what is it? But they stopped basically any leaks from ever coming out. Um, and also this is around the time studios started wising up. And they were actually controlling the flow of information and putting out early hype pieces in the form of like magazine spreads and covers. I mean, I feel like I feel like part of it is the the transition to marketing of how movies were marketed, right? They adapted to the fandom because if you think about like the 40s and 50s, the the marketing would be a trailer for the movie mm-hmm. where it goes the cinematic event of the century. What words mm-hmm. words typing on or whatever, and it would then it would show you Rhett Butler Right, and he would be doing his thing or whatever. You're like, oh my gosh, and then he go, and then it say, you, you, every, you must see this film, and then it would just show another clip. The movie was done, right? Like they finished filming, they made a movie in a in a set somewhere. They took all those pieces, and now they're going to try and convince you how to do it. If I recall, I mean, I don't know the exact timelines of it because I was very young, mm-hmm. but I remember seeing the first thing they ever showed for Jurassic Park was just the symbol, the cover for the book. Mm-hmm. But it was a movie poster. And that was, it felt like years before the movie ever came out. So there's a pretty good chance that they were like, well, let's just put this out. Yeah, and it's a weird thing with Jurassic Park because obviously you have the Michael Crichton book, which is the source material. So no one's going to be spoiled as Mm -hmm. to what the plot of this is. But because there were such great advancements in like uh, practical effects in movie making, the big surprise to the audience was unveiling like mm-hmm. the dinosaurs and all. Mm-hmm. So it's it's weird because now I feel like we're more protective of, um, you know, especially when it comes to franchises, like spoiling uh, plot points, mm-hmm. spoiling big character reveals and stuff. But back then it was really more the the we they didn't want to s- spoil the the um like importance of the spectacle yeah yeah Yeah. it was also that was a time too when they had switched from stop motion to cgi which hadn't been it it, we had seen cgi but not in this way and it was this nice mix of puppets and sort of stuff and james i think you were right it was either just the image and i looked it up i could not find it i'm almost positive there was a time magazine or some sort of ad taken out where it was just the footprint Mm. or it was just a like a press release that Mm -hmm. went out and said we're making the movie (laughs) No, they weren't allowed to take pictures of like what the dinosaurs look like or anything, but it was enough to get the imagination going. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, oh my god, they're doing a, a footprint. Cool. Yeah. Uh, all I could find was an artistic, um, I think, reimagining that someone did. And then in the, uh, it's like a Mondo poster almost, where like in the shadow you can see the uh, T Rex skull. I was like, okay, that was clever. But obviously the original one was just like someone went out with the camera and went boom, mm-hmm. here you go. We don't want to 
spoil this stuff. Yeah. So it's been um, it's been a wild ride, I think, since then. But then a little thing happened uh, that I think movie studios didn't like so much. The internet happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so back then, the internet was still in its infancy. It was filled with a lot of early adopter types, which just happens to be the type of people who love getting information early. Uh, so media back then was a lot harder to share, obviously. Having a digital camera was a bit more rare. Filming, transcoding video on a... Uh, you know, we take it for granted how we can just do this stuff on our phones these days. But back then, shooting to tape and then transcoding it and then getting it on the internet, like, forget about oh, it. Yeah, uploading mm-hmm. that picture for two days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, but what did happen, uh, there was a little website called Ain't It Cool News, which came around, and studios started to blame little websites like that for movies not doing as well, like Batman and Robin. Uh, even though that movie was just terrible. Yeah, it's a uh, hard defense. But it, yeah, it started to become a thing like, well, no, these are the bad guys. They're getting, they're they're telling people not to see this movie. It's like, well, for good reason. Um, but then anyway, so now we can fast forward a little bit. There was a, a little weird kind of period in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, Elise sent me this story that I had no idea about. Um, basically, this is from the early, uh, or late 2000s, is a leaked photo of Iron Man. <laughs> he looks so cool there. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is way pre-Disney. This is Paramount, the pa- Paramount and Marvel co-production of the Iron Man film, which started off the whole MCU, uh, published on the website IESB.net, which no longer exists. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe you can buy it. <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. Iron Man uh, exists. Exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Iron uh, Man exposure <laughs> systems begun. Crazy thing about this story, though. So... The studio and lawyers and all basically sent a cease and desist, made the guy take all the photos down. They ended up using the photo in the movie towards the end when Robert Downey Jr. is reading the newspaper mm. and they used it. And so the the guy who was originally sued countersued and said, you need to pay me for using my picture. Yeah, so, what did that – Some that's those are the kinds of things that happen through obvious miscommunications, but those are huge – miscommunications yeah. where one person's like kill him and the other person's like oh this is fun yeah you know yeah you can't yeah. have them both uh, <laughs> so I, I didn't follow I didn't this part that. uh yeah uh the person in question whose last name is adams filed a lawsuit regarding the photo um against paramount pictures marvel entertainment and is asked that the photo be removed from any future dvds or video games related to iron man so i don't know if they settled out of court or what happened mm-hmm. but uh real interesting story there of how now the leak's coming back around yeah. yeah, it's them being like, oh shit, yeah. actually this is the perfect thing that we well, could use. Also, so they the they were suing the website for publishing the photo, right? Correct. But they they but the photographer is kind of just a third party in this whole thing, right? The uh, photographer is not the person who runs the website, is it? Potentially no. Yeah, you you might be correct there. So so the photographer is like, well, He's kind of unrelated to the lawsuit, mm-hmm. but he's just like, he, he stole my photo. Right. It's sort of a problem with the internet. Once it's out there, it's there forever unless um, you're Google and you like to bury things. So, like, I was trying to find that Jurassic Park image. Yeah. And it goes, oh, I think you mean Jurassic World. Nope. No, Google. I, I meant Jurassic Park. I'll put the quotes around and they go, hmm, I can't find anything with that. Did you mean Jurassic World? Like, God damn it. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to find, like, leaked movie sets and all I was getting was, like, leaked celebrity nude <laughs> articles and things like mm. that. You well, can send, send those to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I was trying to go back in time because we're going to talk more about other other leaked things through the uh, the anals of history. Mm-hmm. I just like saying it that way. Um, well, right now we're watching the leaked trailer for the Iron Man movie, mm-hmm. which actually got the movie a lot of buzz. Um, a lot of people cite this moment where uh, I think some website gave the best cinematography of the year award to this guy who could hold his phone <laughs> still long enough um, because this came out and it, it was this Comic Con, yeah, this Comic Con 2007, I believe, um, and people were really excited to like, oh man, they actually made Iron Man look cool. I was no. so excited that I actually had this trailer like downloaded to my desktop because I thought it was such a good trailer, and I thought that the use of the song, like the Iron Man mm-hmm. like song in it, was like so cool. I watched this trailer so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this this is, was a whole different phase of things because you got websites of people wanting to share information, and then this also happened. They were like, "Oh, people want to share information." I wish it. I wish we could control this information that we share, mm-hmm. so that way you know we can utilize this fandom, but also still not ha- like have it completely run off the rails. Yeah. So then they're like, oh well, we should go to these Comic Con conventions, so we can yeah. show people, we can control how we show people things, 
and then uh, and then they'll go and they'll start telling their friends how cool it was, and the, except they they were like, oh, and they'll also check for cameras. Except there's no way you can check for cameras. I mean, the first thing I always thought of was um, uh, Venom, mm-hmm. Spider Man Three. I think is the first thing I ever really watched on the internet that was a shaky cam in a convention hall or whatever to just show that one last clip of Venom jump leaping at the camera or whatever and everyone cheering. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing that one too because that one, the studio tried controlling it with the first image of Peter Parker in the black symbiote suit. Mm-hmm. Symbiote? Symbiote? I, they, symbiote. The movie is ruined According it. to Venom. Yeah, it's so dumb. Um, and remember going, oh, they just painted the suit black. That sucks. And then that Venom footage came out and went, oh, that doesn't look good. Mm-hmm. Crap. Yeah. Venom might well, not be good. Cheered. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think when you're in that moment, you want to cheer. Anyway, I'm watching. We're I'm playing this Onion video right now, which I think is pretty funny, where they said that the, uh, the Iron Man trailer would be adapted into a feature <laughs> film, uh-huh. <laughs> which I think also just says something about how great that trailer was and to like what Lisa, yeah. Lisa's saying, how you rewatch it, because it is like watching a movie. You're like, man, he escapes from there. He gets his suit, gets a new suit. Beats the bad guy at the end. Good trailer. Mm-hmm. Great stuff. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's that's sort of I think one of the I think that was sort of the first of many things to come. Um, I think Jeff Bridges is pissed that he he blew his lo- load a little too soon in the MCU. What, what are you, you mean? talking about? I'll bring him back. They brought well. They he said he said you know what I'm good. You put Kurt Russell in Guardians of the Galaxy and we'll call it even. Why? How is that? They even? look so similar. Do they? <laughs> yeah, they do. It's Kurt Russell, yeah. Jeff Bridges, and then oh, there's, the, there's one more of them. The triumvirate. Yeah. Can you, Adam? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll look di- it up. Not to divert. No, no, no. But I'm, I'm Jeff Bridges, Kurt Russell, and there's one more. Who is it? That Bridges. looks like. What are you? What are you talking about? They, That's all just, look they look the same. The same? Oh, is it Josh, Josh Brolin, Brolin? Maybe? maybe. That doesn't seem right. Old white guys who look <laughs> yeah, like they each all other. Look the same. I guess. I, like, I mean, especially Kurt Russell, Jeff Bridges. I prefer this Photoshop of Josh Brolin looking like Solid Whoa, Snake or cool. like Venom Snake or Big Boss. Everyone, <laughs> so weird. He's a weird looking dude. Anyway, um, handsome man, handsome man. Uh, anyway, so I think with Iron Man, it, it signified something I think a bit more important, which was this flood that was about to hit us and the utter fandom that was going to follow. Superhero films, technology, and internet all rolling into one, which we're going to talk about in a sec. But first, a little word from our sponsor, Hims. Did you know that 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35? Once you've noticed thinning hair, it can be a little too late to go back. That's why today we are talking about our sponsor, Hims. That's right, 4 is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. It's time to write a new chapter in your life, one in which you have a full head of hair. Thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Hims is helping guys to be the best versions of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA-approved products to help treat hair loss. These are prescription solutions that are backed by science. Hims was created by a guy who knows that some men's health conversations are a lot easier to do online than in person. As always, we highly recommend you see your physician or doctor before buying any kind of pharmaceuticals online. Know yourself well before you do anything. Be an adult. You know how it goes. So if you're looking for something to help you with your hair loss, this might just be perfect for you. So right now, our viewers and listeners can start with their first month free by going to 4 slash filmhouse. Once again, that is 4 slash filmhouse, F-I-L-M. H-A-U-S. Prescriptions requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Offer is only valid if prescribed. Three-month minimum subscription is needed. Additional restrictions do apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Thank you, Hims. Thank you, Hims. All right, and we're back. So Iron Man did its thing. There's a little movie, I don't know if you guys heard of it, called The Dark Knight. Come see, come see. The Dark Knight. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Yeah, it's this little movie where there was a uh, a Joker in it. Actually, even before that, uh, Batman Begins had its uh, script leaked when it was called Batman, I want to say Endgame or um, Intimidation Game, I believe it was called. Mm -hmm. It was the David S. Goyer leaked uh, script, which had a lot of the elements that would later go on into Batman Begins. Uh, But the script came out. People were a little hesitant about it. And if you guys remember the Batmobile, the Tumblr was shown for the first time Mm -hmm. from the back. It had a big ass. Yeah. Pretty amazing, and everyone's like, "This is this is going to be terrible." Yeah, it looks like a tank. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, movie came out to much acclaim. 
Everyone's very happy about it. Wow, Batman's back. Fast forward to uh, the announcement that Heath Ledger would uh, be playing the Joker. Yeah, Lots of boo. Yeah, was, we saw this oh, boo. I got a little fun image for you here. Uh, oh, it's is this impossible to read. Yeah, someone zoom. actually. Yeah, hold on. I'll have to. This is a terrible image. Uh, I had to zoom in to read it earlier. But it's basically a lot of people very upset. It's a collection of collage that uh, this website put together. Uh, everyone calling out Heath Ledger uh, for his role in Brokeback Mountain. And like, mm-hmm. I don't want to see him kissing no Batman. Which nice, cool. Uh, internet was a bit more homophobic back then, I suppose. Was it? Uh, I guess nothing. I would say really... it's about the same. Now we're like Disney. You let no, not Disney. Yeah. <laughs> we're like Disney. Make them kiss more. <laughs> yeah, why? Just, why why like subjugate Disney's, them to the background? Disney's getting brought into it. Yeah. Uh, but. See, um, but yeah, as and then uh, around this time too, there was some leaked images of Heath Ledger as the Joker. And I think people were looking for any excuse to confirm their bias, which was he's not going to play a great Joker. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, this image right here on the right that we're looking at is actually a leaked um, screen test, makeup test, mm-hmm. that was posted on Ain't It Cool News. And people were very upset because they thought this was the final Joker, though a lot of people were comparing it uh, correctly to Ichi the Killer with the, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the sliced scars, which ended up revealing itself years later in some concept art of what they were trying to do with the character's look. Yeah. Anyway. They make yeah. him hold his own color thing. Um, color that. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, we want to see your creepy hands. He's like, why are they creepy? I mean, um, yeah, I guess everyone points to Heath, Heath Ledger as the example of don't criticize casting until you've seen it in action. It was uh, it was actually something said um, for Jared Leto's Joker. Mm. It was like, come on, we were wrong about Heath well, Ledger. That, it was funny how it bounced back because they were like, Jared Leto, Joker. And it was like, all right, wait a minute. Okay, hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's uh, funny. I mean, with Joaquin, we said, well, if Leto can't do it, no who one can? can. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so, I just said, what's going to be written on his forehead? You've been kissing Benson because you've got... No. Benson. Why would I do that? I've been kissing James. you do it, James. like, all day, every day? Mm, don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I'll read some of the comments here, though. Uh, just to remind you of how history was so mean to Heath Ledger... Uh, Heath, let's reminisce about the days of A Knight's Tale and 10 Things I Hate About You, Heath. The Joker, bad casting. Bad joke. Nice. Um, that person's still probably alive, by the way, mm-hmm. and they probably love the movie. Probably the worst casting of all time. Oh, no, it's wrong on every level. This is total bull. I do not like, <laughs> I do not at all like this choice. Hell no. Mm-hmm. And begins the second downfall of the Batman series. I hope this is all a joke. This is... These are what people were I saying. Am not seeing oh, yeah. this movie if he's in it. I mean, I'm skeptical too. I'm not gonna <laughs> pretend like I was. I was like Heath Ledger, not who I would have thought. Mm-hmm. For when Joker. you hear the name, you think of yeah, Knights Tale and things ahead yeah. about you. You're like, okay, pretty. pretty we boy. think like Pretty Boy mm-hmm. teen. At the time, that's what you thought teen yeah. comedy or you know drama or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. And one final quote, quote here: The Joker is a character that needs an actor with gravity, not some little twerp who got lucky. Kaboom, man. Kaboom. Let, let, let us uh, remind you that he won an Oscar for that role after he died. Thank you, Olsen twins. Uh, there was even, the, 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 the internet was at such a fever pitch that the uh, <laughs> they, there was even a story published about someone just submitted a picture of like a little jalopy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and an entire article was written about the Joker's new ride. And this author, I believe from Gizmodo, uh, begrudgingly wrote this article called The Joker's New Ride where he said, Yesterday, Batman fanboy Jason Chen posted a shot of the new Batman costume. Oh, scary, black. How original. I've never seen black before. Oh, wait, black is the color of night or even the color of night blowing my mind. If you don't want to write for a living, just don't do it. <laughs> I'm talking to someone. Finish the article. 13 years <laughs> Finish in Finish the article. Yeah. But I don't have anything to say. I have yeah. no opinions we'll on the matter. Burn so, come up. So after an eye roll and a, a read through a Hunter S. Thompson book, he finishes it by saying, today we get a glimpse of how a real hero is gearing up for the new movie. This in an all new unlit first gen digital camera glory, the Joker's new car. It wasn't. Uh, it no, might maybe not. Maybe it was, but you sure it wasn't cut from the movie? I think, yeah. I think that's definitely the Joker mobile, but it got cut. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know, because then months later they showed the pickup truck where, or the uh, semi that yeah. ends up flipping in the movie. The anyway. Joker mobile was inside the semi mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in the, on the bed. Um, and then finally, I think Chris Nolan once, uh, I think he was starting to become a bit more uh, in control of the marketing campaign, or at least as people were, uh, released this image where they actually showed like a very blurry version mm-hmm. of Heath Ledger. Yeah. Um, very much in control. And then uh, if you recall, months later, I think it was with uh, screenings of I Am Legend, 
you could actually see the first 15 minutes of the movie yeah. of the heist. And that's when you saw the Joker. So like, people were paying yeah. to go see what the Joker was going to look like. And then that he I think because he knew we have something special here. I and, was I was I remember when that first teaser trailer came out with just the explosion and then Alfred talking about some men just want to watch oh, the world burn. Yeah. And then it's his laugh. I was like, give me this movie. Yeah, man. And then and then that I didn't watch any more marketing material for it. You're a smart man. Like, yeah. This it was I was like I was like, oh yeah, baby. Yeah, so good. People will die. I'm the man of my word. Yeah. I mean, yeah, once you hear that laugh and yeah. that um Tom Waits esque yeah. yeah. growl. I'm the man of my word. Yeah. Well, I mean like, you're like, that doesn't sound like Heath Ledger. That doesn't he is a different yeah. character. Heath Ledger just sounds like this. Remember, <laughs> what, what, did, what, did, what did Jared Leto say in his teaser reveal? Let's put a smile on that yeah. face. Put a <laughs> bunch of <laughs> bullshit in his teeth. Yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah. What did you <laughs> say? <laughs> believe, Quinn. believe me, I was one of those people where people were like, you know, oh, he, he looks like the man who laughs. They're, they're doing it. And then they put out that image where he has no eyebrows and a bunch of tattoos on his head and went, ah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, let's hold off judgment. We don't know yet. Mm-hmm. Perhaps... That's just one of his many. That's it. That's the then, look then for the whole release, movie. They're like, no, 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 hold on. He has other tattoos. Well, it's probably too. a meta thing where the Joker does a version uh, of the Joker in the movie. Wouldn't again, I right? still say that it would make sense if he wasn't the Joker of that universe. He was uh, <laughs> Jason Todd, yeah, who sure. was tortured right. by the Joker to look like a stupid version of the Joker. <laughs> Like, <laughs> that's the only way it makes any sense. Yeah. Like, look at his his athletic body. He has J written. He has the word Joker written on him about four or five times. It's like they <laughs> ran out of stuff. Did they yeah. debunk the Jason Todd theory? I don't. I, I don't think, think they're think just they care. I think they're just moving on. Yeah. Yeah. That's so it's the worst. It's I, so terrible. Like I said in the beginning of the podcast, I like to hold off judgment. But once the final product's out, feel free to judge. Go no, nuts. it's garbage. Yeah, it's that. Can is you pull bad. up the scene where he seduces Harley Quinn into jumping into a vat? Sure. He swan dives into it. And remember, that's a scene from a movie that made almost a billion dollars. <laughs> uh, what is it? Dive? It's vat dive or whatever. Uh, it's, it's Harley Quinn yeah. and, yeah. Like, here's the thing I watch Birds of Prey. Mm-hmm. And they do a really good job of dancing around the fact that Jared Leto was in the movie mm-hmm. with somehow still staying in that universe, which I'm just like, you can get away from that. Because it's got some good fight choreography. It's actually a well-shot movie. It's a kind of an editing nightmare. But overall, decent film. Mm-hmm. Not bad. I am like, man, I wish Suicide Squad was more like this. Less of this. It's just... Yeah. Look at this. This is a scene from a movie. This is not Batman and Robin, folks. <laughs> This movie came out only a few short years ago and was hugely successful financially. Yep. And then the sequel, which was, I guess, the spinoff, which I thought was better, did not do anywhere yeah. near as well. Because it didn't have Jared Leto Joker. Look. That <laughs> jump. What is happening? <laughs> he loves her. I. Oh, my God. This movie is trash. <laughs> It's romantic. It's trash. I, yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> uh, it gave Hot Topic a boner, so that's also all I the care fact about. that like he makes out with her yeah. too. Like, <laughs> like it's like such it's the it's the least interesting version of the Joker and that relationship I could ever possibly <laughs> imagine. Uh, then another rewind. Still talking about Batman. This is from The Dark Knight Rises. Another story, at least. Uh, same way. I don't know how you got around that Google. Filter where if I type type in Batman, it's only Robert Patton's and Batman. I'll tell you after the show. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait. Uh, so this was actually back when they were trying to market the fact that Bane was going to be the villain of The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, they tried doing this ARG website where you unlock a bunch of bit bunch of things. Well, there was a pretty big ARG for Dark Knight too. I remember I was driving around downtown LA on a motorcycle to try and find like notes that the Joker oh, yeah. left behind. Oh, that's right. Oh, wow! I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there are people's jobs where they have to fill time mm-hmm. while the movie's coming out. And they're yeah. like, they're like, can we show anything? They're like, absolutely not, because yeah. the movie's under lockdown. And this is sort of another thing that's sort of – it's really weird how it's come about where you now have a a wing, uh, a marketing wing of movies where their sole job is to get people hyped over nothing. Mm-hmm. They're like – they are given one piece of information. Like, we'll try to give you as much as we can. But they they had an image of Tom Hardy as Bane. And it was that shot of him from the back, which is 
cool looking picture. Uh, all the images are down. No. But uh, the fans basically just looked at the source code of the web page, figured it out immediately, and the image was out. Mm-hmm. So uh, Papa Warner wasn't very happy about that. Is this the one where they were like, let's do a puzzle mm-hmm. so you can figure out? Solved it. <laughs> That's what happened, basically. Yeah. Uh, but then you got some like fun on set photos. Yeah. Where mm-hmm. I think I was one of those people where I'm like, oh, yeah, Tom Hardy's small. Yeah. It's interesting. I wonder how they're going to make him look big. And then you see the first trailer where the camera, I think they cut a hole in the floor mm-hmm. to make him yeah. look huge. And he's wearing giant boots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Tom Hardy is a fantastic actor, and their interpretation of Bane was interesting. Uh, I obviously can't go super cartoony with a cartoony character like that, but so worked. I also just love this picture of Christian Bale. With his <laughs> <mouth open. laughs> uh, feed me. Bane. <laughs> I didn't um, know it'd be you. But then, uh, obviously, the leaks never stopped. When, uh, the, especially now with Star Wars, this is a huge deal. Where you know TMZ's slapping their watermark on. We yeah, yeah, we, we ruined everyone's we stole fun. This image. <laughs> yeah, this and uh, Rihanna's battered face. I will remember TMZ being a part of. So proud. Thanks. Yeah, they're like we. Yep, boss. You will think of TMZ when you think of spousal abuse and giant pig monsters on a. a Jack Oo. Mm-hmm. That's the one. Um, but then, uh, obviously, more images were leaking. This is all for Force Awakens. There was a lot of hype behind this thing. But then J.J. Abrams put out a little snarky letter, kind of a little tongue-in-cheek, where he wrote, I wish people would stop leaking photos from Episode Seven and making uh, ridiculous claims that the Millennium Falcon is in the movie. Of course, it's a picture on, on the, the chessboard from the Millennium Falcon. A little, it's a little cheeky. J.J. I mean, he's got a... He's got a card with his name you on know top what I of like, it. You know what I like about stuff like this? Is that he writes it and he's like, this is going to be real cheeky. Seriously, though, I hate all those motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> and I wish they would burn. And I wish it was just a planet without them. Uh, but yeah. The leftovers. He J-J. goes, Lindelof, make the leftovers. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, boss. Take everyone to space. That leaks my photos. <laughs> <laughs> to space, boss? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lindelof. To, um. Wait, David Lindelof calls J.J. Abrams boss? Yeah, he goes, yeah, you want me to send them to space? Leave their clothes here. Interesting. Uh, you guys might remember Doctor Strange had some leaked Who photos. Who could forget? Yeah, uh, I remember. <laughs> I did. It, there was a lot of. I mean, the picture on the left here is what film production looks like. Yeah. You feel like an idiot. You look stupid. Yep. And you're just standing waiting for someone to go action. Well, the Doctor Strange stuff too is that you know that movie is based in New York City, so you have to f- generally film on location. There's obviously the things that they'll never get shot. If they could film it anywhere else, mm-hmm. they would hide it inside a warehouse somewhere. Yeah. Right. But they can't. They need they need to go to New York for this. Right. And you can't control all of New York. So the end result <laughs> is something it's them just running down the street past yeah. a pizza place doing that. <laughs> if they could do it all on a green screen, you would. Like I don't remember there being many leaked photos from like on location shoots for Infinity War or Endgame. Only because it was all shot in a green warehouse somewhere. Well, they have actually even wisened up, too, where they're now filming, um, where is it, in um, uh, Georgia, in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And they're making studio sets look like New York. Yeah. It's it's getting really crazy out well, there. Well, I mean, they've been doing that for forever. There's the, you know, New York set in Universal City. Mm-hmm. Um, can you pull up the clip from Flash and Supergirl? Yes. The TV show? That's my favorite of what, what making a movie, or not a TV show or whatever, actually looks like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, they posted this, I think, on their own, but mm-hmm. like, this is what it actually looks like. <laughs> 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 Hold on. It's not done. He's going to fly away. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. And they show the end result of like, what it actually is. Right. <laughs> but other, it's just a dude spinning his hands mm-hmm. looking like a goofball and right. then uh, someone jumping pretty unathletically into the air. Yep. But. It, it's uh, one of those moments where you really should thank the special effects artist oh my God, yeah. for making you look yeah. cool. Yeah, it was like Avengers where you see um, Elizabeth Olsen and she's like doing this. Yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, are the uh, the Jedi from Episode Two just like? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I don't know. Everyone looks looks ridiculous. But yeah. yeah. It, it, once again, that's I'll. This is the last time I'm gonna probably say it until the end. Uh, it's hard to judge a movie based on its cover. Mm-hmm. I.e., this. Yep. Can one day look like this? Yes. Pretty crazy. It's uh, it's amazing what you can do with time, 
and special effects. Uh, there's some other one. Uh, Lee sent me a lot of great links. Like, uh, oh, yeah. this is a leaked photo of Charlie Sheen's uh, character's <laughs> TMZ. <laughs> TMZ for the win here. TMZ has more pictures of the set here. Oh. Mm. Uh huh. God. Yeah. Now, is this oh, spoiled? No. Is it gone? I think it's it. gone now. God, but... a trash site. <laughs> yeah. Can I not go uh, back and watch the full series of Two and a Half this Men? Ruin and it? Yeah. Spoiled. I, yeah, uh, warning, uh, Charlie Sheen's character dies. Yeah. And often wears those bowling yeah. shirts. For our <laughs> listeners at home, the picture is of what appears to be a chapel or something in a funeral parlor. There are flowers. It's very uh, solemn looking. And mm. then hanging in the center of the walkway uh, is a bowling shirt. And some khaki and shorts. And some khaki shorts. <laughs> so it appear to be cut off khaki shorts yeah. even possibly. Um, even, even our favorite... Wizards got fucking leaked, uh, where they some pictures came out from the end of Deathly Hollows Part Two. And you think this is supposed to be like the big reveal mm-hmm. at the end too? Yeah. Like there's old Harry. Oh yeah, yeah. it's in Hermione. the book, so most people I think yeah. knew this was coming. But God, they all look like nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, not the greatest moment for the uh, Harry Potter uh, quadrilogy times two. Mm-hmm. What do you even call it at that yeah. point? I don't know. Oh my god, I don't even remember him from the end of the movie. He's sort of the, I I think there. He shows up with his kid, I think. To yeah, the, to the platform. They well, all show up at the same because they're point dropping the same their time. kids off at. They all to, live in London. Yeah, yeah. They, they all live in London at yeah. the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Well, because did he go to jail well, for Ron's, anything that he did? Ron's married to Hermione, and Harry's also married to Hermione. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Their world is about this big, even though it's the <laughs> the world of wizards. Yeah. They, they do the thing. Where, I remember at the end of the book, it's like. And then Harry came with his kid who had every name of every person he ever met. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes, and then he saw Malfoy. And, oh, he looked like shit. Yeah, and yeah. his hairline was receding and his dick mm. was small. And I was like, these are weird <laughs> details, my favorite, JK. My favorite is the, the Harry. The, remember when JK Rowling put out the, this is how uh, the wedding night for Harry and Ginny went. <laughs> yeah. oh. Like the unreleased chapter. And she was like, it's like, Harry goes, I'm so happy to be married to you, Ginny. We're going to be sleeping in separate bedrooms. That he sent on <laughs> away. <laughs> uh, and then um, I want to just do a little little notice here. So let us let us not forget the Joker, the mm-hmm. new one that just came out, mm-hmm. uh, Academy Award winning film, nominated film. Uh, just got to the point where people are just filming it now. Oh, yeah. In where fo- is this guy? Yeah, I mean, just hanging out on set. Oh. No one. There. There was just. Some crazy amount of leaks that well, there's another it, microphone right next to it, like a road the microphone. Fa- the fact now, I mean the the new These Samsung extras. coming out is uh, shooting in 8K. You know, like we're at this point now where shooting in 4K with stabilization is a normal thing, uh-huh. and we've just come from a very long, long time ago. We've come a long way from you know friends planning a camping trip around. Potentially, the rumor that they're filming Star Wars. We're yeah. just we're just at this point now where we're getting all sorts of craziness, um, and I, I think it's only going to continue to be like this to the point where you might be able to watch piece a movie together based on people filming leaked things. You know what never leaked? Zootopia. <laughs> Keep it animated, I guess. Right. It's the only way. It's the only way to be certain. Um, in addition to the Batman link that we're talking about too, there were some. Suicide Squad set photos Whoa. with uh, Pete Davidson. Up this there. CGI Pete Davidson, this CGI uh, brother of Gun, and uh, these cosplayers. Pretty cool. They got to show up. Interesting. Yeah, uh, and then also sometimes leaked images go viral, such as uh, Daniel Radcliffe holding two guns mm-hmm. attached to his hand while he's running around a bathrobe. Oh, and said, "What is that for?" From is the upcoming movie called Guns Akimbo. Um, that I've heard is not very good, oh, but okay. the trailer looks silly and it might be worth checking out. Sometimes I don't they, know. I don't judge until I see the movie. At sometimes least. I think Daniel Radcliffe <laughs> can't read. Like he didn't. He never learned to read on the set of Harry Potter because it seems like every movie he's done since hasn't been good. <laughs> no, I Swiss Army Man. What? It's good. Sorry about what? I, oh, I would, oh. I would say Swiss Army Man. They said so sorry, man. Um, he's the corpse. Anyway. Yeah, I was just well, saying he's dead in that. <laughs> well, bringing us all the way full circle to. The current big league. All right, let's judge it out. Yep. So based on all the information I gave you guys, we're now looking at the image of uh, Robert Pattinson's, a lot of Harry Potter-related things on this episode. It all Mm -hmm. ties back to Batman and Wizards. Well, these big franchises, they touch everything. Yeah. A lot of Warner, like you said. 
So we're uh, we're now looking at the stuntman, rubber band stuntman. What judge you, my fellow panelists? Look like Ben Affleck, first of all. Is it like what I I mean it does to me look like his face mm-hmm. under there. Is Ben Affleck now working as Sparrow Press? I don't know. Um it does seem like we've gotten to the point now where like every filmmaker is trying to like Dark Knight was such a big franchise that now every filmmaker that comes next is trying to like make like take their stamp on it. Mm-hmm. Like no one's just making the next Batman movie. So everything has to be a new version of Batman that you've like never seen before. Mm-hmm. So this one it's like, oh, he's got like skater it looks like skater pads the suit and he's is got very the, modular. The high collar neck and stuff like that. And you know, I'm sure someone will go like, well, what do you think ballistics like it means that if he gets punched in the head, it won't cause his neck to whip, which is less likely to cause a concussion or any like something like that. But part of me is like, I never watched the first Batman and thought, oh wait, he can't yeah. turn to the left or well, to the right. It also looks more like, oh, he could have really compiled this suit himself. Yeah. Which I'm sort of past that with Batman, where I'm like learning his trade yeah, kind of stuff. Not- yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, I'm I Matt Reeves, Robert Pattinson, every single step of this process, I haven't been like. No way! These are red flags or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I and again, when these photo, when they the screen test, I would say this is an interesting thing too because this isn't the first image we've seen of the suit. The first image we saw of the suit was when Matt Reeves, the director of the film, posted to his Vimeo account a screen test. Big surprise! Vimeo still in business, which is the, so now we're at the point where it's not even fans leaking it; it's a constructed leak. By the director of the film, yeah. Um, but obviously, this gives us a better look at the suit. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't really know anything about what this movie's about or mm. what um, it's going to do. You love Batman. Love Batman. You love this Batman. I don't know yet. I am. I refuse to judge early on. But if you um, had to, I'm not a fan of the ears. Oh not yeah. A fan of the I, ears. I I really liked where we were with the bat fleck ears, but I understand that that is. That interpretation of Batman, a very bulky, big, mm-hmm. Dark Knight Return style. So I'm okay with the Arkham S Telltale uh, sort of kind of a. This seems to be a mix between the Zack Snyder and Chris Nolan Batman, and also taking some inspiration from other media, which I am a fan of. I do like the overall look, and I think I will. I'm looking forward to see what it looks like in a, a, a final film product. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I think Matt Reeves is a fantastic director. Those apes movies. Yeah, the blew apes. It, blew it out of the park. Uh, and the fact that we're hearing that, like, this might be more of a detective story. You think apes less crossover, of a, maybe? I, well, he's Gorilla got. Grodd? I mean, Andy Serkis is in it. Come with me, apes. Oh, God, Batman find Gorilla Grodd. That would be terrible. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, that's it for all of our leaks on today's show. So thank you. For joining us, uh, I have a couple little bit of house uh, cleaning, housekeeping things yeah. to do at the end. Uh, but real first, a quick word from our sponsor, the film Extraordinary. This episode of Filmhouse is brought to you by the upcoming film Extraordinary. It's a supernatural comedy starring Maeve Higgins, Barry Ward, Will Forte, and Claudia O'Doherty. The movie will release on March 6th at the Alamo Draft House. For more information, go to crankedupfilms.com slash extraordinary. Be sure to check out what critics are calling the next What We Do in the Shadows. Movie looks a lot of fun. I can't wait to see it. I'm just going to tell you something. <laughs> hey, you need to get your sh- together, woman! What? Did you actually just put on a cool voice and call me woman? Yes. Yes, I am so oh. sorry. So thank you, Extraordinary. Be sure to check out the film. So uh, also on top of that movie, I did want to mention we are going to be at the screening for that. So look up more information on that. Uh, I want to ask you guys, because I always do my little housekeeping around here. What are you watching? What should, uh, should what should our audience be watching? Um, well, the new season of Curb Your Enthusiasm is back. So of mm-hmm. course I'm watching that. Well, I mean, Curb... Can, it's been on for what eleven seasons now. Can never be bad. Mm-hmm. Not possible. It's it's a it's interesting for me because obviously like Bob Einstein died before they could film it. Mm-hmm. Super Dave, yeah. They played Funkhauser, and mm-hmm. uh, they've so Vince Vaughn has been on the show as what is Marty Funkhauser's cousin. cousin. Yeah. And I'm kind of wondering if like he's been filling what Maybe. were supposed to be some of the parts. Maybe. But it's it's strong as ever. It's great. Yeah. I need um, to watch it. I'm this isn't a high. cry for help. I feel like I haven't had time to really watch anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, we wa- We recently rewatched Knives Out again. 
Because uh, it's available, three times. It's available on demand. I heard a rumor Ryan Johnson knows who the Willemses are nope. now. He, he reads the tweets. He, okay, has read but he doesn't read the names. <laughs> no. um, there, is, there is a video of Ryan Johnson reading potential Knives Out sequel names. <laughs> on Collider. Mm-hmm. On Collider. And both you, both you we two. Made the he cut. He didn't pick mine. Did you pitch one? I said... Fuck you for ruining Star Wars. Oh, okay, that, <laughs> that might be why. You? Okay. Oh. Yeah, he may have... Hey, coward. <laughs> I may have... Mm, mm. Um, I also drove to his house and yelled at him. Uh, that was the right thing to do. Thank you. Watch for like all Star Wars eight fans. episodes of Lock and Key. How is that? I don't think it's yeah. that... Netflix has now solidified itself as like highly produced mediocre things. I think there's a lot of great things about the show. I think the look of the show is really good. It feel the uh, the soundtrack is really great. The casting's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, but then love, there's just love like the comic. But the con- I mean, it's based on really good. Someone made a great decision to base it on good source material. But it just feels like I don't know. I don't know if it's a lack of oversight or whatever. But it's just kind of like it felt. If you know, I, I never finished watching Witcher, but that was the kind of thing where I was like. This feels like a cheap show made expensively mm-hmm. in some ways. And and Lock and Key is, is at this point, I mean, I'm watching it, so there's something to be said for that. But at this point, it seems very cheap made expensively, mm-hmm. weirdly. Like the kids talk like Riverdale. My, yeah, my biggest <laughs> gripe with the show is how the kid, the teenagers speak with one another because it's very unrealistic. And I don't even remember it being that like contrived in the books. Mm-hmm. In the comics, but yeah, it like it gets under my skin every time they're having a conversation, and it's just these weird witticisms that I'm mm-hmm. like, "What? This isn't mm-hmm. how teenagers do talk. they do." They do the flashback episode where they they show the the thing under the house back in the old every, colonial they, times. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. They haven't done that. Okay, but the show is moving weirdly. It's like it feels slow. Like you'll watch an episode and you're like, "It feels like this episode's taking forever," but in terms. Of, if, of the graphic novel, it's like moving at a blistering pace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's just blasting through Man. books one, they've two, three, four. They've combined keys. Yeah, they're, and they've like oh. and made up new and, keys yeah. and stuff. And so it, it's it's weird. Yeah, I, um, I enjoyed the series and I like that it ended. Uh, I liked yeah. where it ended. I remember really enjoying it. So um, yeah, it seems to be Netflix's thing is everything is, as long as it's okay. They got it. Well, they get great properties. To, to make stuff. Uh-huh. I think they get talented people to work on it, but I think maybe their timeline is like expedited. And so yeah. that that early pre-production phase where you're trying to figure out these scripts and make sure these things are tight, I don't know if that's where they're devoting that much time. Mm-hmm. I think it may be like, it's done, let's shoot it, as opposed to going back and going like, can we actually make this right? a really scripts. great script? Well, the fact that like um, they made Umbrella Academy and it was just so mediocre when... The property is oh, so interesting. I, I, are, uh, I also comics. will concede Incredible. that Netflix has those numbers, right? They're doing yeah. a season two of Umbrella Academy. Sure. So they must have known. Someone someone yeah. watched they the show. They are making a lot of content that is very digestible. Because mm-hmm. um, you don't, uh, you know, with a lot of like dramas and sort of premium shows, a lot of the time you find yourself like, oh, I watched that and I just, I feel like I need to watch something lighter now mm-hmm. to like cleanse my mind. Yeah. But with these, it's like, oh, you know, it's still... Pretty yeah. high, st- high stakes show with no stakes. Meanwhile, HBO is now in a Game of Thrones p- or post Lol. Game of Thrones world, and they're like, "What are we? What do we do now?" They like the Outsider. We're not caught up in the Outsider because we made the mistake of starting it with Zach, so now we have to watch it with Zach for the rest of the of time. <laughs> um, but so, uh, but it's what we saw was great, and yeah. it's clearly a win for HBO. Um, there's a show that I'm really anticipating that hasn't come out as of recording this. But I was telling Adam about it. Foreigners. Be- say the name again. Foreigners. Before. B I G. Foreigners. Nailed it. Yeah, and it's basically like, it's kind of like if you took the leftovers and then a show like, The Returned, and like combined them. So it's, it's people from the past being inexplicably transported to the present. Mm -hmm. But then there's like this new xenophobia that happens where people are like, go back to your time. (laughs) Like, it's like, yeah, like the foreigners go home and it's like, well, what can they do? Mm -hmm. They're foreigners. based on anything? Uh, I don't think so. It kind of reminds me of a book, a friend of mine, uh, Mikey Newman, who used to write for Gearbox. Um, I forget the name of the book that he wrote. It It was very similar. Um, oh, what was the name of the book? It's going to kill me. Google Mike, Mike Newman book. 
Uh, sorry, cut this part from the show. Uh, what's it called? The Returners? The Returners. I wonder if... It's a historical figures that find themselves born again to the same bodies just in modern times. Yeah. Wow. Mm, very similar story. Wow. Interesting. Mikey Newman. Hey, dude. Mikey, I hope you got paid for your... Uh, your idea. Yeah, but back to the Beforeners trailer. <laughs> well, HBO has already shown that they can get people hyped. I don't know how the numbers were, but it seemed like everyone I know was talking about Watchmen. Yeah, you know? Watchmen yeah. was like a big, like I think they were, they were like, man, we don't have our Game of Thrones. What are we doing? And they're mm-hmm. still producing really amazing content. Yeah. yeah. So. I, I'm i in the same boat as James. I feel like I've just been so busy with stuff that I, I have about, I don't know, an hour a week. To yeah. consume something. Um, I am very excited, though. There are certain shows where like, I just put everything on hold and I'll watch. It's like Brockmire is uh, one of my new favorite shows. It's going into this fourth season. I don't know if anyone's watching it. I got to watch it. You, I, It's uh, an interesting comedy because he is – the character Hank Azaria plays is such a train wreck. Mm-hmm. And then he goes through a season of sobriety, which is kind of hard to watch because you're so used to this character being self-destructive. But then you find out that – it's not really the drugs or the alcohol. It's him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's the self-destructive, which is a lot of comedy for a character, you know, mm-hmm. character. Uh, or It's a lot of character for a comedy show. Sorry. Yeah. But um, one of my favorites, even even on its its bad days, it's still hilarious and really good, and it's on a channel no one's watching. So mm-hmm. best of luck, IFC, with the final season of Brockmire. I highly suggest checking it out. It's a very funny show. Um, also, a lot of people have gone, why haven't they reviewed Birds of Prey yet? I haven't seen it. Oh. I saw it. I, th- I think I, I, I think I kind of gave you my mini review it. earlier. So, uh, and then I know people want us to review The Witcher. Uh, I'll see you in four years when I finish it. Frozen Two. <laughs> Still haven't seen it. Loved it. Haven't seen it. Um, and uh, yeah, just yeah, thinking yeah. about the mo- like other movies I want to see again. It's time thing like Portrait of a Lady on mm-hmm. Fire. I want to see. We had uh, Once Upon a Time in Hol- Hollywood on yeah. last night, and I was uh, like, yeah, I could watch this again. Uh, one final teaser, we will be reviewing, it'll be a light one, uh, the film Onward. I did get to go to an early screening of that one. So I'll be telling you a little bit about it and some of my thoughts. I can say nothing now because I am under a big fat embargo. I took some photos. I filmed the whole thing on my phone. Do you guys want to watch it? <laughs> oh, yeah, let's it's see. Really it. All right, we'll see you guys there. We're going to go watch Onward. <laughs>